One of the problems uh, that you face when you make jewellery is making it look fantastic when you finish making it. Um, it's something I've had problems with ever since I've been doing it, is how to make your photography look as spot on as possible. Um, and this, I'm hoping, is the solution to my problems. This is a, a photo light box. This is by Light Tech, sold by Cookson's. It comes in two sizes, a small and a large. This is the larger one of the two. Uh, internally, its dimensions are 33.75 by 30 by 27 and a half centimetres. So you've got quite a lot of room uh, for manoeuvring jewellery around inside. And basically all it is, is a box that lights up from all sides. So your jewellery uh, is evenly lit and it combats one of the main problems which is consistency. You want your work to look you know, the, the same every time you photograph it and lighting can be really difficult. If you're relying on natural light, you're, you're sort of at the mercy of the weather. Even with, with um, lamps and bulbs, you can still get some variance and it's very, very difficult to light everything from all sides. So let's have a look at this fair. What it comes with, it comes packaged beautifully, really, really sturdy box. So you've got the light box itself. There are these uh, doohickeys which are for attaching the camera, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. It comes with a cover, which is really neat and keeps it nice and clean. It comes with a UK kettle lead power supply. It comes with a European um, power supply as well, power lead, sorry. And it comes with three of these which are uh, external LED sources I'll show you in a second they come in white and blue and green and they're specifically for uh, showing off gemstones but you can use them with jewellery as well so let's have a look what I was worried about is this wasn't going to be uh, simple to use I thought it'd be fairly complicated but it's an absolute joy it comes with fairly comprehensive instructions and you literally plug it in and put on the on switch. Okay, this is it's going to get bright when I open the door and you might not be able to see things but I'll, I'll, I'll explain afterwards. The door itself is beautiful, this is the main door so you can shoot from the front and it's attached with magnets at the corners so it's nice and strong and it means you can operate it one handed so if, you, if you're holding your jewellery or your, your camera you can quite easily take that on and off. Now inside, um, you've got here on the front, if I go along the front, so you've got your power switch, you've got uh, an LED button here which is going to make it uh, much brighter, I hope. There we go. And over on the right, you've got controls for the back, base and front. So you can adjust the brightness of the LEDs in different on its different surfaces, so you've got a bit of control about how it's lit from inside. I'm going to turn this right down so you can hopefully see. It's actually, before I do that, this is quite cool. <laughs> when you first use it, it looks like you've got some sort of weird anti-gravity chamber if you see, you've oh, got floating hand. Uh, anyway, so okay, you've got good control over the, the, the way you light. So inside, what it is, what we've actually got is um, the sides uh, uh, a sort of thin plastic and you've got a plastic cove from the back so you've got a curved plane so it looks like you're shooting into infinity uh, which is very nice and so you, it's really really straightforward you just pop your I don't know if you'll be able to see this you have to give me a clue pop your bit of jewelry in yeah mm -hmm. and then you would this is going to make it too bright for you to see but obviously you adjust you adjust the lighting until you're happy. What you can also do at this point is... You with me? Yeah. Plug in one of the external LEDs, which you can then use to spotlight the stone, or however you see fit. You see that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Right. The mechanics of actually taking pictures, which is important. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this off for a second. Right, if we come up to the top, now obviously you can shoot straight through the front if you wanted to, or there's a little trap door 
in the top. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. um, hello. For you to put your camera in. This is the bit where the instructions sort of lost me um, because they don't really cover it. You've got, okay, so you've got these bits. These were, these were separate, these plastic bits. And <laughs> you've got three of these fellas, these screws, okay, and one of these. Now this, quite obviously, through process of elimination, goes into the base of your um, digital camera where the tripod would go, okay? And then the others, the other screws are used to hold, hold it in place, okay. which is fine and dandy. Only problem is, I don't know whether it was just a, a, an issue with this particular um, box or it's something you've got to be aware of. Oh, sorry, I've got to unscrew this a minute. While well, these screws pass straight through all the slots, no problem. They think it's a nice snug fit, but they go through it. This one, it doesn't tell you how, like how to assemble this to attach your camera. So you've got to kind of work it out. Now, this is a bit of a clue as what the problem is. I need to work this out quite. Stiffly, bear with me, talk among yourselves for a minute. <laughs> Some time later. Okay, so this is the same diameter, all these slots are the same diameter. You need this screw to go through this uh, slot or through this slot. Um, now the problem is, if you look, it doesn't quite fit. Um, and I was too worried, I, I didn't want to force it, this is like stiff plastic. My brother, who's got a very beautiful um, a digital SLR camera, who I wanted to try it with, came and he just did the old, let's use brute force, which proved to work. Um, so you had to really force it through, and then you can kind of screw it, a mixture of force and sort of screwing it through the plastic, which is not supposed to do, there's no threads or anything. And again, you have to bear with me. I need some. Can you make some hold music? I like this. Anyway, eventually you get the idea. Actually, I need to do it. <laughs> so stiff. It does go through, but it was really, uh, really tricky. It's, it's slightly wider diameter screw fitting than this, so it was a little bit annoying. That's all. And you can see it chipped the plastic, and you can see it made teeth marks um, where we got it through. Once it's through, it's fine. Um, but it's just, you know, with, with both fittings we have to do that. Um, and then what you do, when you've got past that, so you screw it in so it's in, it's fit in place, and I've done that. And then uh, your camera points directly down, so it's nice for getting overhead shots. Um, and then obviously you can just use your tripod if you're shooting in from the front, whichever way, whichever you're not using, so if you're shooting from the top, then obviously you want this closed up so you're not getting any reflections and you're getting as much light as possible. Um, the only problem we found, my, I've got a normal tiny uh, point and shoot digital camera which I have no problem sitting on here. I can't show you it because I'm using it to film this. Um, and I'll show, put some pictures in of uh, when we tried it with the SLR. The SLR we used um, was a small bodied one but we had a real struggle uh, to, to get it to fit with the macro lens on. It did it, but the angle wasn't entirely comfortable. Like, like we were at risk of, I think, there wasn't much wiggle room, was there? And we were slightly worried that we were gonna damage um, sort of where the lens goes onto the camera. We were having to force it at that kind of angle to get it in. But you'll see, I'll drop some pictures into this video so you can see what what the problems were. Aside from that, I use my, uh, sort of, uh, I don't like admitting it, but I've been using my phone camera. It's better than my normal camera and it's been absolutely fine. So, say you're shooting from the front here. Um, something of note, okay, if you're using dark jewellery, you can see, I'm going to put it on again, tell me if, you, if it all goes invisible. Okay, can you see it? 
I oxidise a lot of jewellery, so when you've got a good contrast between the dark jewellery and the white of the box, you're laughing, it's, it's, it's very easy to pick up. Something you need to bear in mind, that when you're using more polished silver, your contrast has dropped right down, you've got shiny, shiny silver against the white. So what I found better, rather than shooting from the top, you can get quite a dead looking finish. It looks like you've got, sometimes you've got matte finish, one that's really, really shiny. So I've been shooting from the front and then using either a mirror or an external, like this little, I've got a standalone little LED light that um, I can use, just so you can get some spot highlighting on the on the reflective surfaces it, it just makes it a little bit easier to work with because um, even though this is a very controlled environment and um, you know like the temperature of, of the bulbs I think is five and a half thousand Kelvin so you can match your, your white balance and your you know sort your lighting out your camera settings accordingly you still need some tweaking once you get it uh, get, get the actual pictures off your camera. Um, what I find I've been using, I use Photoshop and I've got a tablet um, so you know you can, you can select it and uh, just adjust the, the, the brightness <laughs> the brightness um, surrounding the jewellery. You will need to tweak it is what I'm saying. It won't look as bright in your pictures um, as it does in real life and you need to sort the contrast out a little bit. But what you do have is a very controllable um, setting for your jewellery. You know it's always going to be consistent. You have got the ability to tweak it to your your liking, and it's it's you know it's it's so lovely, and it's just a <laughs> little unit that I I've been sort of putting it away and taking it out, and it's so quick to set up and use. Um, it's a real joy. Uh, yeah, the only thing that was slightly annoying was, was the working out how to attach the cameras and the fact that we did have to sort of slightly damage the, 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 the fittings to, to get it on. It's a, it's a small niggle, really. Um, and to have it all really easily controllable in one place is just brilliant. Um, I'll quickly show you these other LEDs. So I've, I've shown you the white one. You can actually do two at once. There's the blue. Okay, so if you particularly want to show off your gemstones, or you you know you do your own uh, stone cutting. There's the. Oh, what's the white one again? There's a bright green one as well. These are good for getting the most out of your your stones. And what what this is nice about this as well is when you photograph your jewellery, like you don't really want to spend too much time editing it. You don't want it to look like a fiction. You want it to <laughs> resemble the actual piece of jewellery that you've made. And this allows you to sort of make the best of your jewellery with minimal um, sort of fussing around with um, imaging software afterwards. I really, really love it. It's made a phenomenal difference to how quickly um, and how straightforward the photographing process of my jewellery is um, and I definitely recommend it.